Hey everyone, how's it going? Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Today we're talking Tesla, specifically the Model S, and is it really that good? I'll answer that question and a few more coming up. Right now, let's go take a look at it. So, just over a month ago, I placed an order for a new Tesla Model S 75D, and two weeks ago, I took delivery. Since I picked it up, everyone keeps asking, how do you like it, what features does it have, and is there anything you found that you don't like? I figured there must be more people out there who might be wondering the same things, but don't know anyone with a Model S ask, so I decided to make this video for you to answer those questions. First, let's talk about the details of the car that I ordered. As I said, it's a Model S 75D, and Tesla recently changed the available options on their website, so the 75 kilowatt hour battery is no longer available. Now the Model S and Model S Performance are your options, and they both come with the 100 kilowatt hour battery. Mine does have dual motor all wheel drive and came with the adjustable air suspension, no sunroof, and I added the full autopilot hardware because uh, autopilot, self-driving car, yeah. Anyway, I've driven almost 800 miles so far since pickup. The questions you probably want answers to are, is it worth it and do you like the car? Well, let me cover the pros and cons and hopefully shed some light on the subject. So let's start with the pros. Initial feelings I have so far from driving the car are absolutely positive. The seats are well designed and comfortable. The cockpit designed around the driver and any previous issues that owners had about fitment and trim are completely taken care of. The car is sleek, sexy, and feels great to drive. The user interaction with the car is almost completely done through the huge touchscreen mounted in the center portion of the dash. Any option, setting, whatever, it's there and pretty easy to find. There are quite a few menus, but after a day or so, you learn pretty quickly where everything is. They've also included two scroll wheels on the steering wheel that can be used for quick changes to certain settings. The car has 12 ultrasonic sensors and eight cameras with the autopilot hardware, so pulling into a tight garage or parking spot is not a problem at all. The display will show your distance in inches from obstacles so you can get super close without making contact. The audio in the car is amazing. If you love your music, you'll be extremely pleased. Tesla designed the audio system specifically for the car and with how quietly the car rides, any audio file will be in heaven. The highs are crisp, the subwoofer fills out the audio very well, and yeah, it's amazing. Included with the connectivity package, which is about $100 a year, is streaming radio by Slacker. So with your Tesla account, you get unlimited skips, you can thumbs up your favorites and search for pretty much any song, genre, whatever you want. Thumbs up on that Tesla, nicely done. The car has home link, like many new cars these days, so you can program your garage door opener. But the best part is that it knows where home is and will automatically open the garage door for you as you approach. I'm loving this little feature. It's not a huge feature by any means, but you will find yourself enjoying the automation. Navigation is powered by Google Maps, so you can search for a business and it will give you all the options nearby. Tap the one you want and go. Nav works very well in my opinion, and it will even reroute if traffic is bad to save you time. The displays in the car are well thought out. They're very crisp and clear with not too much information and not too little. You can also choose what info is displayed to personalize your experience. I like to keep up the nav directions in my power graph to keep an eye on how much juice I'm actually using. Connecting your phone to the car with Bluetooth is simple and makes using your phone in the car very easy. The phone user interface is excellent since there's so much real estate on the center screen. You can access contacts, recent calls, or dial numbers. Calls are clear and people on the other end say they can hear me fine with no distracting background noise. 
With the way Tesla designed the auto lock, auto unlock of the car doors, there's no more reaching in your pocket for the key fob. You simply walk up to the car, it unlocks, and the door handles auto present. You get in and go. Upon arrival at your destination, you simply get out and walk away. The car will lock itself, fold the mirrors, and tuck away the door handles. It took a couple days to fully trust it, but now I park and walk away without worry. As previously stated, the ride quality is really good. The air suspension does a really good job to dampen bumps, but bigger ones can still be felt. The car is responsive and moves quite well with steering inputs. It feels extremely grounded and stuck to the road. Quartering at higher speeds feels like the car is on rails thanks to the all-wheel drive. Another nice little feature that Tesla recently added is a built-in dash cam. Just toss in a USB thumb drive, properly formatted and set up, and you can record from the forward-facing camera. Right now, the feature is in its infancy and a little thin in the capabilities arena, but hopefully they can adjust it to be a little more robust. The next two are pros as well as cons. Autopilot. It is awesome to be able to kick on autopilot and have the car actually drive itself. It works rather well, although intended for highway use, it does work on normal street roads fairly well too. The downside is if there's no speed limit information in the nav for that particular road, auto steer is limited to 45 miles per hour. Or in several instances, I've found the speed limit information to be incorrect. It thinks the limit's 45 when it's actually 55 and the car only lets you set five miles per hour above the speed limit, so you get 50. Cruise control, however, is not limited as far as I've seen so far. Uh, so autopilot comes off. I do the steering, let the car take care of the speed control. No major issues there. The navigate on autopilot function works fairly well too, but it's still undergoing development and improvements. I'll be headed farther away from the house in the next couple days, so I'll test that out a little more. The other pro slash con is the Tesla app for your phone. I love being able to wake the car up about five minutes before I leave, turn on the climate control, and climb in with everything set to my liking when I head out. The app has features such as summon, lock, unlock, and much more. The downside is that it is a little slow to open as it has to wake the car up from its sleep to communicate. Being able to control the car from my phone, however, I can overlook a small delay. Okay, so you're probably thinking at this point, I'm a complete fanboy and I'm not going to say anything bad about Tesla. Well, sorry, but there are a few things I'm not liking at this point. They're fairly small issues, but still, for a vehicle at this price point, eh. So, Summon. The Summon feature is cool and it totally wows people that you show it to. You can drive the car from your phone or just have it drive itself to you, so long as you only need to go forwards or backwards. No turnings allowed, at least not at the time that I record this. There is rumor of a remote control mode coming that might allow turns, but not yet. Also, Summon is unbearably slow. It takes forever to start to move and then it's slow going once it is moving. I understand why, but it's a feature I don't see myself using, at least not right now. Also, when you get into the car after being out of it for a while, it might have gone to sleep to conserve battery power. This means that if you're in a hurry and hop in to try to drive away quickly, you can't and will have to wait for the systems to boot up. This only takes about 10 to 15 seconds, but I've had to sit and wait for the car to respond. Eventually it boots up and off you go. If you just ran into a store for a little while or use the app to wake the car up on your way out, this isn't an issue at all. Now, the car is pretty much a computer on wheels, so that means glitches. Small and infrequent, but they do occur. Sometimes they fix themselves, other times you have to reboot the car. Again, this process is pretty fast, but it can be annoying. I've only had one issue where the LTE connectivity didn't connect, so that meant no streaming radio, and that wasn't going to work for me. I rebooted, and everything worked just fine, and I was on my way. One of the very unique features the car has is a built-in internet browser. You can pull it up on the center screen and it even works while driving. Well, it works while driving when it actually works, that is. I've had more times where it won't load pages than it actually will. 
I'm sure they're working to fix this, but come on, do you really need a web browser in your car? Yeah. <laughs> I've discussed the auto steer autopilot limitations, but remember it is still in beta mode, which means it's not perfect yet. Along with those, the car can also auto park. It's pretty cool. You pull up next to a spot, you stop, put it in reverse and let it do its thing. Parallel parking is quite good. A pull in back in spot, well, that takes some time, just like summon. The car every time will try to back in. It won't make the turn tight enough and has to stop, pull forward and straighten up, then back up again, all at a snail's pace. I can park it faster, so that's not super helpful. The other issue with that is you have to have a vehicle on either side of the open spot for it to work. I try to avoid those parking situations as it is, so it's not really used. Hopefully Tesla can find a workaround for this in the future. Now onto the cost of this bad boy. I drove the car this past week to and from work to include my normal errands. I logged the miles driven, kilowatt hours used, and average watt hour per mile. So for the week, I drove a total of 230.2 miles and used 64.5 kilowatt hours at an average of 280 watt hours per mile. What does that mean? Well, I paid 9.82 cents per kilowatt hour here at the house, and I only charged here at the house, so this week cost me $6.33 in power costs. The average price of gas in the U.S. today is about $2.28 per gallon. So to drive the distance I did this week, a car that gets 30 mpg would have used just over 7.5 gallons of gas, costing about $17.48, and a car getting 20 mpg would have needed about 11.5 gallons at a cost of $26.22. The gas costs are about three to four times the cost of the electricity I used. Toss in the fact that I do have solar on the house and generated just over 71 kilowatt hours of power for the same five days, I'm not even paying for the electricity I used. Costs to service the vehicle are going to be minimal as well. Tesla officially recommends getting the car serviced every year, but realistically I'm hearing every other year is just fine. There are no oil changes, tune-ups, exhaust maintenance, anything like that. Just tire rotations and refilling the windshield washer fluid. Brakes should also last quite a while as the car has regenerative braking, so I barely use the brakes. I really only use them to come to a complete stop at stoplights and stop signs. So what are my overall thoughts? I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons. You get so much with this car and it's a head turner that is a blast to drive. The cons are slowly being fixed and since the car can receive updates over the air via LTE or Wi-Fi, some of the cons may completely disappear altogether. Future additions that are in the works sound really cool. Sentry mode to protect the vehicle and use cameras to record if anyone hits the car, breaks in, etc. That's, that's going to be pretty nice. Uh, advanced summon slash remote control mode should be pretty interesting. I'm excited to see if that comes around. And last but not least, the car has what I call OMG factor. When you step on the accelerator pedal, you are thrown back into your seat due to the immediate torque and acceleration. It is exhilarating. So like everyone asks, do I like the Tesla Model S? No. I love it. I don't want to go back to a gas car ever. If you're on the fence, you're thinking about pulling the trigger on one, don't wait. Just do it. You will not regret it. So with that, thanks for watching. Comment down below if you have any questions, uh, things you want to see in future videos, or just let me know what you love most about your Tesla if you've got one. Subscribe to the channel as there will be more videos coming soon and hit the bell to know when they're posted. Thank you again so much for watching and I hope to see you back for the next video. Take care.